My name's Harriet. I hack your AI, so the bad guys can't. Now, this one's going to be a bit mathy, but don't worry, I've got you. I'm going to explain it all in plain English. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Harriet. I miss the boat in computer hacking, so now I hack AI instead, and I'm here to help you understand how you can secure your AI systems from attackers. So we've talked a little bit about adversarial machine learning. In this episode, I'm taking you through five of the most common, popular, what's the right word <laughs> for an attack? Um, adversarial machine learning attacks. Now I'm going to be including the mathematical formulas here or formulae, but I don't want you to worry too much about them. I think it's important to become familiar with them, particularly if you're having discussions with academics. You know, it's important to be able to look at the equation or at least maybe replicate the equation if you need to, but then think about how that translates to computer code to actually implement an attack like this. But I'm going to be talking through all of them in plain English, so don't worry. So we're going to be going through five adversarial machine learning attacks. And the reason I choose these five is because in the image and the evasion categories, they're really very popular and they provide a good example and a good proxy for adversarial machine learning as a field. However, there are at least a hundred different kinds of attacks. So really take these as inspiration for how some of the math works. These techniques have been extrapolated to many other use cases as well, and then many other attacks created. But these are some of the originals, so it helps to understand these at least. And these are definitely ones that you would see in the media, I guess, if people are talking about that in the media, or at least in papers. So the first one is universal adversarial perturbations. That sounds very fancy. It means random noise. So if you add random noise to an image, for example, or any other kind of data, so if you have audio data, time series data, like uh, stock market prices, weather data, any kind of data, but it really helps to look at an image, for example, and see that. If you add random noise to an image and you point a image classification model at it, it'll really struggle. A lot of models are very brittle, even to small perturbations from what they expect to see. So if I add random noise to an image, the confidence in that model's classification is going to drop. Now the significance by how much it drops depends and whether it causes it to misclassify it also depends, but most models are vulnerable to attacks like this. From a more real world perspective, there was a study recently done by the United States um, Defense Department, I think it might have been through DARPA, where they wanted to test some person classification models they were developing. And so they asked a bunch of their Marines to try and evade these models, these AI systems. And they were able to do things like put cardboard boxes on their heads or wave branches around. And that caused the model to not be able to recognize them because they weren't acting the way that people normally act. So first of all, models are very brittle to things they don't expect to see. They're not very robust. Now, the second kind of attack, the fast gradient sign method. So this is the method that was proposed in the original adversarial machine learning paper in 2013 by Zegedy and Goodfellow with the Panda and the Gibbon. And it basically takes advantage of understanding the gradient function of a target model. And it does what's called a one-shot update. So it picks a, any number between zero and a small value that you set as a maximum so that it's not too obvious to a human, which we refer to as epsilon. And it performs one round of optimization based on that information to create this adversarial example, which is then fed to the model. Now, this is pretty good most of the time, and it is still an attack that is crafted based on the model. Um, you could really use any similar model here, actually. You don't need to use this specific victim model. The thing about models is that they tend to converge when they're trained on similar data sets or they're trained to do the same thing. So if you craft an attack based on one model, then it'll be pretty good when you launch it against other models. The next attack we're going to look at is projected gradient descent, and it basically takes the fast gradient sign method a step further, and instead of doing a one-shot update, it iterates it multiple times. So it's more likely to end up with a combination of pixel that's less obvious, but it's more likely to cause a misclassification. Now, both the fast gradient sign method and projected gradient descent can be used for disruption attacks. So just causing the model to predict like anything else or for 
deception-based attacks, so where you're performing a targeted attack and you want it to, to, to choose a specific target at the end. Here are some examples. So just as you can apply this technique to the whole image to cause a misclassification, you can also apply this technique to just parts of the image. Facial recognition is another interesting use case where this happens. As you can see, those images were adversarial glasses. So by adding those perturbations just to the glasses, those researchers were able to cause the models to misclassify who those people were. These researchers were also able to defeat facial recognition models by using makeup contouring. So this isn't really an example of PGD, but it is an example of being able to hack the model because it sees something that it's not used to. So now, for those of us out there who wear makeup, this is something to keep patch. in mind. And it basically creates this patch that you can place on or near an object and the model will make a prediction based on that patch instead of the actual object that it's meant to be predicting. This is done in, in a similar way to the fast gradient sign method and projected gradient descent, except you're localizing the region that you're altering. And you're doing a few other fancy bits of math to it as well. But basically, instead of creating adversarial pixels that change the entire image, you're picking a specific portion of the image. And that means that they usually are a bit more obvious. It's harder to cause a misclassification if humans can't detect the, the change in the adversarial patch. Now, the last method is called the one pixel attack. And this is also an iterative approach where you're basically changing every pixel in an image in turn by different colors, trying different color combinations of RGB, so the red, green, or blue values of that pixel, or setting it to um, zero or 265, which is, you know, white or black. And you're seeing if disturbing one of these pixels will actually cause a misclassification. Sometimes it won't work, but sometimes it does. Now, like I said, there are lots of other attacks we can implement. Carlini and Wagner is another popular attack that's used. So I'm also a researcher in the adversarial machine learning space, and this is a technique I proposed in a paper last year as well. And it basically takes this idea that you can perturb just parts of the region instead of the entire image. However, usually you still need to perturb the actual object you're trying to misclassify. Whereas I'm interested in techniques where you can add objects into the environment that cause a misclassification without actually needing to alter the object that you're trying to disguise. However, at the end of the day, all adversarial machine learning attacks rely on optimization and taking advantage of the optimization process. So there are a few ways that you can defend against these attacks. First of all, just make your models more robust to begin with. <laughs> so if a model is trained on images that are very different, whether that means seeing more examples of the particular thing you're looking to classify in different circumstances and different environments, that will really help your model become better at classifying it when it sees something new. The next thing you can do is adversarial training. So you can actually incorporate adversarial examples into the model training process. This is highly effective, but not done in a lot of cases. And the third technique you can use against these sorts of attacks is gradient obfuscation. So I needed to have access to the model's gradient to craft those attacks. Um, but if I don't have access to that, then it's a lot harder for me. I will say, however, that because of that convergence that we mentioned earlier, if I have access to a model that's similar to yours, I can still craft an attack that will be pretty effective. There are many other defensive principles you can put in place. However, at the end of the day, I would say it's all about risk. It's all about risk-based mitigations. We want to move away from a mindset of attacks and defenses when it comes to artificial intelligence, and we want to think about maturing the approach so it's a bit more like cyber and information security. So risk-based controls, mitigations, and principles. I'm going to link some other resources so you can find out more about other adversarial machine learning attacks, as well as things like machine learning and optimization. The Harriet hack for this episode, honestly, I just want you to not feel scared about looking at formulas. They really aren't that complicated at the end of the day and if you want to understand adversarial machine learning better you absolutely can. Now comment below if there are any other attacks you'd like me to explain. I will be doing other videos that go into more detail after this series so please let me know which specific attacks you would like to see. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to support me and not miss out on the next episodes and that's all for now. I'll see you in the next episode.